Diva Streets in Denver, rolling down Welton Street and connecting to the first little activity area. Very cool. And this is a big part of why we do these is being able to open the streets up so that people of all ages and abilities can come out and enjoy the street. The other neat thing about uh, these open streets events is you're able to get out and see some of the street transformations that have been taking place to try to make the streets a little calmer a little more people friendly so you see a, a lane that has been closed off to motor vehicles and some traffic calming again just a really neat way to catch up on some of the transformations that have been taking place Okay, you two, what are we doing out here? It's Viva Streets. We're walking, rolling, biking on car-free streets, three and a half miles. This is the third event of four, and it's fabulous. <laughs> yeah. Loving it. Loving it. <laughs> That's right, things you can't see from your car. Being out here. Guess who I have with me? Howdy! My name is Ellen Forhofer. I work for Downtown Denver Partnership and I am the project manager for Viva Street Denver. So Ellen, what is Viva Streets? Viva Streets is an event we are hosting four times this summer where we close three and a half miles of our biggest streets in downtown to cars and we open them to people, people walking, biking, rolling, dancing, um, really carving out space to not only support our local businesses, but connect with our community in a new way. And, you know, how hard is this to pull together? Well, it takes a lot of partners. It's certainly um, a village effort. Uh, we work in close partnership with the city. Um, we work in close partnership with Denver Streets Partnership. Um, and with all of our sponsor organizations, none of this would be possible without them or the over 150 volunteers that we have out each day for these Viva Streets events. Now, you're, you're a resilient bunch because the first two uh, episodes this year was tough. <laughs> <laughs> I am drier and warmer uh, than I've ever been at Viva Streets. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Talk a little bit of the historical context of what it takes to put this together. Yes, yeah, so Viva Streets is based on open streets events that have a strong heritage in Latin American culture. Uh, the first Cicla Via event actually started in Bogota in 1974, really similar to what we're doing, closing a few miles of streets on a few Sundays. It has since grown into an event that they host every single Sunday and on most holidays. They close over 75 miles of streets and see millions of people turn out. Um, so this event series is inspired by Ciclovias, which started in Bogota, um, and really working to bring Ciclovia culture here to Denver. And what was really the driving force as to the why? Why you really wanted to do this here? Yes. Because Denver's not Bogota. That's true, that's true. <laughs> uh, but Denver is a city that has a very strong bicycling culture. Um, we are a city that loves our outdoors. Um, there are so many reasons uh, that we think Ciclovias can be very successful here. And Downtown Denver Partnership has been working for several years to understand what we would need to do to study best practices 
so that we could bring uh, Viva Streets here to Denver. And we're so excited to be able to do that here this year in 2023. Yeah. And I'm going to swing the camera around so that uh, folks can see my shirt here. Uh, you know, one of my taglines is that uh, streets are for people. And one of the things that I love about Open Streets events is that it helps to reframe what the community thinks a street is for. Yes. No, it's really exciting to see that when you carve out space for people on streets, we know what to do with it. We are able to fill it. We're able to come connect in different ways. Viva Streets is not only about bringing people together in our streets, it's also about supporting local businesses. Uh, the route runs along Broadway and Walton Streets. It connects two um, really amazing business corridors in the Baker and Five Points neighborhoods. And our team has made uh, individual contacts with over 300 businesses, helping them understand what the event is, how they can participate and activate and, and be a part of Viva Streets this year. Yeah, it's fun to see it all happening. It's fun to see them all out here. I'm so glad that we're both here together riding down the middle of Broadway. This is a street we normally don't get to bike on. Um, and it's such an experience, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> so the question I had for you, Ellen, was, uh, you know, is this the first time uh, an open streets has been done in, uh, in Denver? It's not. It's actually not even the first Viva Streets. Viva Streets uh, did happen about 10 to 12 years ago. I think there was an event on 23rd and on Tennyson. Tennis yeah, so you mentioned that it had been done uh, about 10, 12 years ago, yes. and you're re reviving the yes. Viva Streets name. Reviving Viva Streets, yes. And this is the first time uh, that we really experimented with our downtown arterial streets, so some of our biggest streets in downtown Denver, with uh, an open streets event. Fantastic. If we swing the camera around, you can just see the, the businesses, you know, articulating with the crowd here, taking up a little bit of space in the street and but more importantly just people taking over the streets how cool is that it's so cool. <laughs> it's so cool. we're doing it yay <laughs> how long do you would you say it took you to to uh, organize and plan this um the better part of a year year and a half okay uh ddp has a program every year called urban exploration where we take city leaders uh, to different cities to learn best practices. In 2021, we went to Mexico City. We got to experience Ciclovia together. Um, and that's part of what helped build some of the momentum to then continue planning through 21, 22, uh, and launch Viva Streets this summer in 2023. <laughs> it's too sweet not to catch. Oh, it's so good, it's so good. So tell a little bit more about uh, the, the downtown uh, partnership yeah, organization. Downtown, downtown Denver Partnership, we are a nonprofit organization really focused and centered on helping to make downtown Denver a fun, accessible, uh, and equitable place to live, work, and play. So we run the Business Improvement District. We do a lot of the place management downtown. Uh, and we also um, help launch things like Viva Streets. Ellen, thank you so very you. much. I really appreciate it. And congratulations on a sunny day. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, hopefully more sun. The next Viva Streets event is August 6th, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. We'll be on Broadway and Walton Streets again. I love it. Fantastic. Yay! Strike! Good job. And why do you guys like coming out for this? Ah, uh, just to like, get to experience the street without without cars on it. Yeah. Um, we uh, always dread having to get in the car. Yeah. Uh, so it's nice to see and to experience the street, and we see you know new places that we hadn't noticed before. Right. And get to stop it and experience it on a more human human level. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's. It, I think it's, it's truly special because yeah. you're just able to feel it and it's, experience the city in a different way. So what do you like best about this? Um, similar to him, I like being able to ride on the street that normally cars yeah. 
you know, uh, drive on and we get to see lots of businesses we don't normally see driving by super yeah. fast. Yeah, it's just nice to see everyone out riding their bikes. Oh, and it's quiet. Yeah. It's and quieter. So much more quiet. Quieter, quieter. How about you? What do you like best about Viva Streets? Uh, that I get to roll too. Yeah. <laughs> Rolling places is a really cool thing, for sure. <laughs> Very good. And, and what are your names? Uh, I'm Nicholas, and this is my wife, Amelia. Very good. And my daughter, Eva. Yay! That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Well, thank you all, all three of you, so much. Yes, and I'm sure I'll see you around because I'll be yeah. zipping around getting things, so. Yay, okay, bye-bye. Gary said that I should be on the lookout for you. Yes, here, <laughs> here you are. Are we having fun today? We are having a great time. This is amazing. This is amazing. Yes, it is. Very well, good. I'm Elizabeth. This yes. is Sue. We are we are Wendy's passengers. Yeah. Fantastic. So we're yes. Just having the fun. And you're just having fun. Yeah, yeah. we are. We're yes. Yeah. Here, now, are you going to switch it up and 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 you'll be the pilot for a little bit? <laughs> I don't remember. Was that the fun trip? Wendy? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's part of Wendy's secret mission. You know, it's oh. like, yeah, it's. Uh, oh, oh, you didn't realize? Yeah, that no, was the train the the pilot uh, program. <laughs> we're part of the senior program, so we'll just. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. So Wendy, why don't you just take a quick moment to uh, introduce yourself and introduce uh, Cycling Without Age. Uh, my name's Wendy Bristol and I volunteer for Gary Hardy's Cycling Without Age chapter yes. in Lakewood. And I believe I've been doing this for, I think we started in 2018. Wow. The fall of 2018. Fantastic, fantastic. And uh, we give rides to seniors mm -hmm. for free. It's an uh, all volunteer run program. I think I get more out of it than my passengers do, really. Yeah. Uh, you, you answered my question, which is what do you get out of it? Why do you keep doing this? What do I get out this? of it? Well, I love to ride my bike. Mm -hmm. uh, I love to be on a bike. I love to be outside. Yeah. yeah. And I love people. And I find that people that have lived lives longer than me so far, at mm -hmm. least, mm -hmm. have the best stories. Yeah. And they are happy to tell you them and you can learn a lot yeah. from them, which is great. Yeah, you do, you do. Yeah. I, yeah. I find the same thing with dogs. A, yeah. Just... This is my husband, Randy, and he hey, helped Randy. me get the tri shot into the van. Oh, very, very good. Yes. I, been able to do it I was going to oh, ask about it, that. Yeah. <laughs> it is very nice to meet you. Thank you both so much. Yes. Yeah. Denver Streets Partnership, yay, cool. Woo! What's going on here today? We are, um, well, getting people to, to know about us, signing up for our newsletter because um, we can't do our work without our basic supporters. Right. Um, but also because RTD is free for two months, July and August, 
anywhere, uh, any train, any bus. Um, we are asking people who do take transit, whether it's train or the bus, or often or not often, to um, share their transit story with us. So we have uh, an online form that they can fill out or uh, in paper. And if they fill it out, we can give them two free tickets to the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. So, Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Score. Yeah. Super good deal. So if you know anyone who's taking transit, they can um, yep. use this QR code. You can just go to freetransitdenver.com or, mm -hmm. um, you know, show up here and we can hook you up, I guess. Wonderful. Why don't you just take a, a moment to talk a little bit about the, the partnership? Uh, so Denver Streets Partnership is an organization trying to make it easier to get around without driving and generally um, make streets more safe and convenient for people to get around in, in as common space. Yeah. Um, so we do, uh, some of what we do is events like these or help put on events like these where we demonstrate to Denverites what's possible when we don't prioritize cars yeah. and just really let them reimagine the street as a different space. Um, but then a lot of our work is actually policy advocacy as well. So um, trying to connect people on the ground who are taking transit, who are riding their bikes and have this experience and have um, an understanding of what would make it better, taking those people and giving them voice at um, you know city council and in, uh, in the state legislature with RTD so that uh, power holders and decision makers can make changes that more effectively um, help those people get around. Fantastic. Yeah. And your name is? Adrian. Adrian. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Adrian. Yeah, thanks for stopping yeah, by. Yeah, cool. Yay. One of the greatest, most fun things ever of uh, being able to get out and uh, film these open streets events is you get to uh, meet uh, people from the audience. Hey there. Hello. Who are you? My name's Holland. Holland, and you go by? Mr. Computer. Mr. Computer. So you were just saying this is the first time you've been at an open streets event. What do you think? This is amazing. Yeah. I, I didn't expect it to be so long. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's so much street blocked off. It's awesome. Yeah. And. Do you know, is this a street that you're familiar with? Yes, I commute um, to one of the buildings downtown okay. on Welton, actually. Okay. Which is one of the streets that's blocked off. Yeah. And I come down the Cherry Creek Trail, um, which crosses right under Broadway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the building's actually on Broadway. Right, right. Uh, there's no bike lane on Broadway, so I think. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when we look at this street, I mean, it's just this massive, uh, <laughs> massive, massive strode. A uh, high-speed corridor, but yeah. you look at the businesses here. I mean, there's so much, you know, businesses that you know yeah. could really benefit from like, not having an auto sewer. Yeah, like right here, the Wizard's Chest is somewhere mm -hmm. I've been wanting to get, but there's really no way to get to it easily yeah. um, by public transit. Or, yeah, um, and it's a little bit far for me to ride my bike. Yeah, whenever I want to go. Yeah, in fact, let's swing the camera around and, and check this out. Yeah, so here's the Wizard's Chest right here. And a good friend of mine was just stopping there with her son, um, you know, popping in. They wanted to make sure that okay. they uh, they came down from Boulder to do this. Oh, okay. And they wanted to make sure they uh, stopped into the wizard chest. So yeah, good point. Yeah. It's like not a very accessible business, you know, if you want to walk or bike to it when it's on this massive auto sewer. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Thank you so much, man. Glad yeah, you said hi. You. Yeah. <laughs> good deal. Yeah. Okay, well, hey, it looks like I found a friend. <laughs> Marcus, how are you, What's sir? What's up, John, buddy? How you doing, man? Uh, so what on earth are we doing down here in Denver? This is crazy, right? <laughs> the streets on a Sunday, wide open. Wide open. Just for cyclists. I'm going to swing around here, too, as we're talking, so we can actually see just that. It's, it's, it's wide open. Crazy. So this it's, is Viva Streets. So this is yeah. Denver's Viva Streets, and this is the July edition. Right. Um, as somebody who grew up here in the city, how special is this? 
this this is special, right? So let me just say I'm of AARP age. Uh -huh. Therefore, uh, when we were kids, we used to come down here. A lot of the streets have changed, you know, obviously over the years, you know, one ways or now two ways, vice versa, more bus traffic. But to be able to be actually here on Broadway um, on a Sunday, it, it's just amazing. And it, it just brings back um, the joy of kind of hanging out on a Sunday with your parents, doing the crazy stuff like, let's go for a ride. And we would just drive as far as Broadway could go, right? right? And then turn around and, and come back on the opposite side. And having no one here today with just very few cars, even on the adjacent street, it's just amazing. It's, you know, I just got back from Europe mm -hmm. and this is the way it's supposed to be. Right. Yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned, you know, the, you know that historical context of what it was like uh, you know, to sort of grow up and, and, and see the streets. And then there was that period of time when, you know, in the 80s and 90s, 70s, 80s and 90s, where things just got really, really car centric and the streets got really, really dangerous. I get the sense that we're starting to, to come back. We're starting to take the streets back a little bit and it should be balanced. You should be able to drive, yes, but you should also be able to walk and bike and use transit. Yeah, you're exactly right. And I, I think the, the aggressive steps, and I'm going to say aggressive steps, the, the DSSP and I think it's Bicycle Colorado and, and things that have been put in place with, uh, with the state legislature and Governor Pola signing is actually making it safer for us. And one of the things that I like to really uh, emphasize too is that uh, since, since our streets really are meant to you know, serve everybody, is all we really need to do is kind of slow that traffic down a little bit. Because once you have that, a lot of collisions can actually be just completely avoided because you're going slower. Oh, yeah. I mean, right today on Broadway, yes, I'm yeah. probably going to break the speed limit going down Broadway. <laughs> so there's nobody here. Yeah. But um, I think just really slowing down. Yeah. I mean, Colorado is a place that we need to stop and smell the roses a little bit. Yeah enjoy these beautiful days and and really just stop and relax and, and yeah. just kind of appreciate how lucky we are to live here in Colorado and, and have these advantages because I don't think there's too many cities across the country that will close major thoroughfares right. you know on a Sunday yeah right that's yeah. just not gonna happen yeah, yeah. so we're, we're really blessed and, yeah and I got to thank all, all the folks that are doing that great work because yeah. this is a true blessing yeah. <laughs> streets are for people! Streets are for people! Alright, love the one wheel. Woo.